the three second rule, three seconds, the power of thinking twice. Give your first impulse a second thought, transform your world. Just three seconds, the time it takes to make a decision. That's all lies between setting for whatever and insisting on whatever it takes. Three seconds shows us to unleash an inner resource and we can move to a whole new level of success. It comes down to six predictable impulses that most of us are automatically accepting without a second thought. You can replace them with new impulses that lead towards impact and significance. For instance, it takes three seconds to empower yourself. First impulse, there's nothing I can do about it. Second impulse, I can do everything, but I can't, I can't do everything, but I can do something. Quitting stew, quit stewing and start doing. First impulse, well, someday I'm going to do that. Second impulse, I'm diving in and I'm starting today. Fuel your passion. The first impulse, I'll do whatever happens to come my way. Second impulse, I'll do what is designed and designed to me to do. And I'll do what I'm designed to do. Inhale, exhale. The difference of your lifetime can begin in the space of a single breath. Inhale, exhale. The decision is yours. Start today. In plain language, Dr. C. Mashwell says, Dr. Perot shows us how a momentarily pause, just three seconds, can alleviate your entire life. I can't imagine anyone who would not find this book to be invaluable. If you're a leader, then you should buy it for a case and give it to your staff. Three seconds. Les Perot. Human freedom involves, or our capacity to pause. Now, our freedom evolves in our capacity to pause. To choose the one response towards which we wish to throw our weight. Rollo May. The power of thinking twice. Let the first impulse pass. Wait for the second. Grant us a brief delay. Impulses in everything is a must, but a worthless servant. Casio status. Think about whatever it takes. Pause for whatever is going to happen. No matter what you're going to think on any situation, just pause. Understand your first thought. But learn that three seconds. Learn the three seconds where you breathe in and think whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. The first instant fallacy is if your hunch proves a good one, you were inspired. If it proves a bad one, then you are guilty of yielding to thoughtless impulse. The six impulses that never pay off. The impulses to give up before trying because we feel helpless, the shun of challenge because it seems daunting, settle for the status quo because we lack vision, shirk responsibility because it's easier to shift blame, do the mere minimum because that's all that's expected, avoid taking action because we fear failure. Each of these impulses is self-sabotaging. They do nothing to elevate our lives. They are in a sense a way of smugly saying whatever to life. We can't live like that. Number one, the impulse to give up before trying. Half-heartedness and mediocrity don't inspire anybody to do anything. Number two, the impulse is to shun a challenge. People who believe that they have the power to exercise some measure of control over their lives are healthier, more effective, and more successful than those who look lack faith in their ability to change changes in their own lives. Albert Bandura. Three, the impulse is to settle for the status quo. The impulse to shirk responsibility. The first order of business to anyone who wants to enjoy success in all the areas of his or her life is to take charge of an internal dialogue that they have and only think to say, and to behave in an instant manner consistent with the results that they truly desire. The impulse is to do the mere minimum. The impulse to avoid taking action. Why three seconds makes all the difference. Every advertiser Madison Avenue knows that he just has three seconds to hook you into his ad. And in the short time, you only have that to see the ad, to assess overall images. By influence by the colors, drift, area, main importance, whatever advertisers call the heat, zero an essential message, absorb it, identify significance to it, and then make a decision to continue to investigate it. The same holds true in newspaper business. But what happens in three seconds on a printed page pales in comparison to what happens in a more complex social interaction. For example, in three seconds it takes you to walk through a door and extend your hand to someone at the first time. That person has already made irreversible judgments about you. People read intentional and unintentional signs that we are putting out to react them to before we long we've had a chance to say or do anything in a substance. It, it all happens in just three seconds. Again, three seconds, someone will judge you. The human mind of astonishing contraption, capable of incredible complex procedures and analysis within milliseconds. And it does all this automatically. It doesn't have to be trained to make quick decisions and snap judgments, but it does learn to say secondary impulses and the first ones to say faulty. Well, that's what Sidney J. Harris was getting. And when she said, the art of living consists of knowing which impulses to obey, obey and which must be made to obey. 
a hundredth of second here, a hundredth of a second here, a hundredth of a second there. Even if you put them end to end, they still only add up to one, two, perhaps three seconds before the race begins. Number one is to take three seconds to empower yourself. Confidence is going after Moby Dick in a rowboat and taking the tartar sauce with you. Zig Ziglar. People are always blaming their circumstances for what they are. The people who get there anywhere in this world are the people who get up and look for circumstances that they want. And if they can't find them, then they make them. George Bernard Shaw. Why some people are passive. For the experiment, 20-year-old graduates fresh out of the high school, he observed experiment to set him in a question to understand why some people give up and maintain passiveness while others look for solutions. For an experiment, researchers taught dogs to associate in a tone with a very mild shock. The dog, was, the dog was retrained in a harness and repeatedly exposed to sound followed by the shock. The hypothesis was later upon, upon hearing that in the same tone, unconditional, conditioned dogs would associate the oncoming shock and run otherwise to try to escape. Seligman Associates placed an unrestrained dog into a shuttle box that contained derived, divided in half by two by a low wall. When the tone sounded, the dog could easily escape discomfort and mild shock by jumping over the wall into another half of the box. But researchers were surprised by the dog's response. On hearing the tone, instead of jumping away or the other side of the box, the dog lay down and began to whine. Even when the shock came, it did nothing to evade it. They tried the same thing with the previous conditioned dogs. For full two-thirds of them didn't even try to escape the negative stimulus. They got used to the negative stimulus. Settlement concluded the dogs had learned to be helpless. In early conditioning, they received a shock no matter what they, no matter how much they barked or jumped into the struggle. They learned that nothing that they did mattered. So why try? Have you ever felt like one of these dogs? Have you ever given up because it seemed as though you were helpless? And if you're not alone, like the dogs in Seligman's experiment, have the response of helpless matter that they've learned. Again, they've learned a helpless matter. They've learned it. You can unlearn it. You're not as helpless as you think. Learning the helplessness is giving up a reaction to quitting responses that follow from the belief that whatever you do doesn't matter. Learn helplessness is giving up reaction. The quitting responses that follow from the belief that whatever you do doesn't matter. The finest hour or not. So from now on, you're going to live into the finest hour. Every hour is your finest hour. Someone says, how you doing? In your mind, you're thinking you're in your finest hour. You say, excellent. We choose to be powerful or powerless. It may not always feel like it, but it is a choice. Blaine Lee. So what's your approach? Man who says it cannot be done shouldn't be interrupting the man who is doing it. Chinese proverb, exercise your mental muscle. People who consider themselves victims of circumstances will always remain victims unless they develop a greater vision of their lives. How to empower yourself? Number one, say what you know instead of what you don't know. Cultivate care and really mean it. Brandish optimism like a weapon. People's beliefs about their abilities have a profound effect on those abilities. And it takes three seconds to empower yourself. All over the place from the popular culture to propaganda systems, there's a constant pressure to make people feel that they are helpless, that there are roles that they have to ratify decisions or to consume. So questions to personal reflection. Number one, it's been said that our commitment to achieving success can be measured by the discourages. And what discourages us? What does this mean to you? What it currently discourages you? How is this discouragement causing you to be more helpless than you really are? Question number two. Difficult circumstances, people, personal problems can affect our ability to care when in our midst of our situations. Rather than being reactive, what proactive decisions can make ahead of the time will empower you to act in a caring way, to think about things proactively now ahead of what's going to happen in a caring way. Optimism is the top rated weapon for combating and combating helplessness. Optimism is the best weapon in the world, yet it's often the most difficult to wield. In a situation you find it hardest to be optimistic. After reading this chapter, what are some specific ways you can focus on a positive, the positive in those situations and in the future? Chapter 2. It takes three seconds to embrace a good challenge. It's kind of fun. It's to do the impossible. The most valuable resource brings your work and you to affirm and for you to affirm your creativity. Exactly. And exactly what is a challenge? Something that tests you. We're not lost. We're locationally challenged. The number one reason people resist is a challenge. They're scared of challenge. Fear of failure. Another big reason people give up before trying is why should you embrace a challenge? A challenge is a dragon with a gift in its mouth. Embracing challenge takes you further. Embracing a challenge increases your joy. Embracing challenge keeps you optimistic. Embracing challenges make you tough. You've got to decide sometimes in your life when it's okay not to listen, what other people are saying, and if I had listened to other people, I wouldn't have climbed Mount Everest. Embracing a challenge keeps you growing. Embracing a good challenge. 
All who have accomplished great things have had a great aim, have fixed their gaze on a goal which has high, one has sometimes seemed impossible. Exchange your problems for opportunities. Think about this, Leslie and Cashier. The magnetic strip on the back of my card is nicked up and not working, Cashier. Oh, no problem. I can key in the number by hand, Leslie. I appreciate that. Sorry for the hassle. Oh, no worries. Just to be sure, I put the right numbers in here. Inoculate. Inoculate yourself against critics. Courage is being scared to death and saddling up anyway. John Wayne. Be willing to face the music and honest feedback. The greatest challenge to any thinker is stating the problem in a way that will also allow a solution. It takes three seconds to embrace a good challenge. Number one, don't dismiss opportunities to embrace a challenge. Number two, inoculate yourself against critics who want to pull you down and invite. Number three, invite someone into your life to give you honest feedback. What doesn't kill us makes us stronger. Frederick Nietzsche. Frederick Nietzsche. Questions for personal reflection. Number one. Do you identify with Seth Gary, the hotel manager, at the beginning of the chapter? You can see yourself embracing the same challenge in a way if you were in his shoes. Why or why not? When faced with a challenge, and your first impulse to say is too difficult, you are already inclined to give a good challenge and an honest try. Either way, personal examples do you have to demon what personal examples do you have to demonstrate your leaning? The chapter points to several reasons to embrace challenge. It takes you further, increases your joy, keeps you optimistic, it makes you tough, keeps you growing. Embrace a challenge. Uh, be attracted to challenge. From now on, you're interested in challenge. Which one of these reasons motivates you mostly and why? Whenever you've had most likely problems, look at the problems now as opportunities. Have you ever reframed difficulty situations in this way? What did it do for your ability to make progress? Perhaps one of the current challenges is derived directly from this chapter in facing the music. Learn to face the music lovingly, boldly. Look the world in the eyes. If you're serious about becoming a better embracing a challenge, you need, to, you need someone who will speak and give you honest feedback. Someone who will speak freely into your life, who is and who can be this person for you. Chapter 3. It takes three seconds to fuel your passion. Only passions, great passions, can elevate the soul to great things. Dennis DeRoe. Whatever course you decide upon, there's always something to tell you that you are wrong, that there's difficulties arising to tempt you to believe that your critics are right. To map out a course of action and to follow it to the end requires courage. Ralph Waldo Emerson. If one advice confidently is the direction of one's dreams, and you advance confidently in the direction of one's dreams and end of wars, to live from which one has imagined, one will meet with success, unexpected, in common hours. Henry David Thoreau. What passion will do for you? Capital isn't scarce. Vision, that's scarce. Passion, passion propels persistence. Having passion itself, passion begins with a vision. How to capture your vision. Emotion can drive a vision. Nothing great was ever achieved without enthusiasm. Stop telling yourself that dreams don't matter. They are the only dreams. They are only dreams and they should be more, you should be more sensible. Information can communicate a vision. Burning desire to be or to do something gives us a staying power of reason to get up every morning or to pick ourselves up and start again after a disappointment. To love what you do and feel that it matters. How could anything be more fun? AIDS and poverty together claim the lives of 6,500 Africans a day. More than 28 million Africans are HIV positive. 2.3 million have died of AIDS last year. Without HIV, the average life expectancy in sub-Saharan Africa would be about 63. It's now about 47. How many people have embraced the vision of Africa because these statistics have captured their minds? Well, sometimes we can be numb to emotional pleas, and it's hard to argue with the hard data as much as to search for a vision or pay attention to these kinds of things that you're drawn to learn more about. And as you read the newspaper, watch and discover, or the Discovery Channel, or search the Internet, what interests are you intellectually or might contain the seeds of vision that maybe you can embrace? Involvement can reveal a vision. Follow what you love. Don't deign to ask what they are looking out for there. Ask for what you have inside of you. Follow not interests which change, but what you are and what you love, which will and should not change. Georgia and Geyer. Passion does not automatically follow vision. If you want to build a ship, don't drum up people to collect wood. Don't assign them tasks and work, but rather teach them to long for the endless immensity of the sea. Success is not the key to happiness. Happiness is the key to success. And if you love what you are doing, you will be successful. It takes three seconds to fuel your passion. Don't give up on what you're trying to do, you really want to do. When there's love and inspiration, I don't think you actually can go wrong. Questions for personal reflection. While it may not be a conscious, most people are inclined to live their lives by doing what happens to come their way or as they're opposed to doing what their hearts long for. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate your inclination in your life and why? The chapter states that most people lack passion because they don't have a vision. Do you agree? Why? Or why not? What is the picture of the future that gives you passion in the present? To be specific. Be specific. 
Also, what are you doing to make this picture a reality? Do you agree that the one of the great gifts is having passion and personal persistence? What examples from your life do you have to back up in your position? The chapter closes with an illustration of Johnny Cash in an audition. Are you bringing it home? Make sure you bring it home. Or are you singing someone else's song? How will you know when your life has changed? Live with a deep and abiding passion. Chapter 4. It takes three seconds to own your piece of the pie. The price of greatness is responsibility. Sir Winston Churchill. An error doesn't become a mistake until you refuse to correct it. Our greatest fear is not from which we live to discover an inadequate, but that we will discover that the and that, that we are powerful beyond measure. Why we don't like to take ownership? Maturity comes not with the age, but with acceptance of responsibility. You are only young once, but immaturity can last a lifetime. Who's responsible for this? Owning up to behalf of someone else. Taking up of responsibility in three seconds. What we say and what we do ultimately comes back to us. So let's take our own responsibility, place it in our hands, and carry it with dignity and strength. Remember, everything comes back to us. So let's take responsibility in our hands, carry it with dignity and strength. The sorry state of apologizing. When you make a, a mistake, admit it, correct it, and learn from it immediately. Stephen Covey. How to take ownership. Put your money where your mouth is. You can't accept the responsibility of tomorrow by evading it today. Responsibility will get worse. Anyone who has never made a mistake has never tried anything new. Albert Einstein. Apologize when necessary. Action springs not from thought, but from a readiness for responsibility. Responsibility is a unique concept that can only reside in the heritage of a single individual. And you may share it with others, but not in a portion from which you diminish. You may also delegate it, but it's still within you. Responsibility. You may disclaim it, but you cannot divest yourself of it. Admiral Hyman Recover. There are no calamities that right words will not begin to redress. Ralph Waldo Emerson. It takes three seconds to take ownership. The greatest power that a person possesses is the power to choose. Questions for personal reflection. Number one. Can we call an incident with a clerk or a co-worker or anyone else who refused to take their part? What was the incident? How did you feel about the response, about their response when they didn't want to take their part? And why? When it comes to resisting impulses, it's not a problem. It's how proficient are you? Now, the fast and slow like to take ownership. After the answer, take yourself and ask yourself. Ask your spouse or a close friend to answer for you. Does the answers match? It almost is impossible to take ownership without uttering the two magic words as I'm sorry. Why is it so tough for us to say I'm sorry? Just say I'm sorry. Say I'm sorry but mean it. It's okay. It allows you to grab everything and take responsibility. Do you think it's ever appropriate to take responsibility for something that's not directly your fault? Like a hotel desk clerk who didn't make the booking mistake? Why or why not? Matter of fact, become attracted to taking the mistake. And let it be clear to everyone that you're actually clearly trying to take the mistake. And you're sorry for it. And you'll take responsibility. Thinking again of your frustration when someone shifts blame and evades responsibility. How can you use empathy to more quickly take ownership of your responsibility of the problem? Chapter 5. It takes three seconds to walk the extra mile. Our brightest blazes are commonly killed and kindled by unexpected sparks. Samuel Johnson. There are no traffic clam, no traffic jams when you go the extra mile. Roger Staubach. Setting high standards makes every day and every decade worth looking forward to. What's the extra mile? The best things in life are unexpected because there were no expectations. The extra mile. Success comes directly from doing over what you are expected to do. How to know when you are walking the extra mile. If you want to be creative in your company, your career, your life, take it one easy step. That's the extra one, the extra mile, the encounter of familiar plans. Just that one question is, what else can I do? What else could we do? The extra mile is never found on the path of least resistance. Do more than the minimum. I will do more than belong. I will participate. I will do more than care. I will help. I will do more than believe. I will practice. I will do more than be fair. I will be kind. I will do more than forgive. I'm going to forget. I'll do more than dream. I will work. I will do more than teach. I will inspire. I will do more than earn. I will enrich. I will do more than give. I will serve. I will do more than live. I will grow. I will do more than suffer. I will triumph. Author unknown, sometimes attributed to the William Arthur Ward. The amazing power of the extra mile. The amazing mile creates a buzz. The victory of success will be half of what you've learned in the secret of putting out more than you expected and more than what is expected in all that you do. Make yourself so valuable in the work that eventually you will become indispensable. Exercise your privilege to go the extra mile and enjoy all the rewards you receive. Og Mandino. The extra mile can bring rewards. 
a racehorse that consistently runs second faster than any other horse is worth millions of dollars more. Be willing to give the extra effort that separates the winner from the one who's in second place. The extra mile exerts influence. The extra mile is memorable. The difference between the ordinary and the extraordinary is that little extra. Jimmy. Signal posts. Signposts along the extra mile. Conviction. Remember that looking past, looking past the negative is the secret to don't lower your expectations to meet your performance. Raise your level of performance to meet your expectations. Expect the best of yourself and do what is necessary to make it a reality. Flexibility. You could start right where you stand and apply the habit of going the extra mile by rendering more service and better service than you now are being paid for. Napoleon Hill. Generosity. Honesty. Never skimp on that extra effort, the additional few minutes, the soft word of praise or thanks that deliver the very best that you can do. You can never do the best. You can never do your best, which should always be their trademark. And if you are cutting corners, then you're shrinking and shirking your responsibilities. Never cut corners, ever. Have honesty. Have humility. The kamikaze pilot who flew 50 missions was involved, but never committed. Have humor. It takes three seconds to walk the extra mile. Questions for personal reflection. When was the last time someone walked the extra mile for you? What did he or she do and how did you know it was the extra mile? When was the last time you consciously walked the extra mile for somebody else? What specifically did you do and how did the other person respond? Do you agree that the extra mile is never found on the path of least resistance? Why or why not? The extra mile is marked with positive surprises including generosity, flexibility, honesty, humility, humor. Which of these surprises is the easiest for you to pass to continue on the extra mile? Which needs more effort? How can you improve your response to the more difficult impulses? Chapter 6. It takes three seconds to quit stewing and start doing. You can't build a reputation on what you are planning on doing. What does not tomorrow? Worry does not empty tomorrow of its sorrow. It empties today of its strength. So don't worry about anything. It kills today of its strengths. There are two kinds of failures. The man who will do nothing he is told and the man who will do nothing else. All worthwhile people have good thoughts, good ideas, good intentions, but precious few of them ever translate those into action. John Hancock. The heights of great men reached and kept were not attained from sudden flight, but they were while their companions slept, were toiling upward in the night. If you want to make a creative company, your career in life, that all it takes is one easy step, the extra one, the extra step. When you encounter a familiar plan, you just ask one question. What else can we do? What are your intentions? Nothing ventured? Nothing lost. The reason most goals are not achieved is for which we spend our time doing nothing from the first place. The thing is, is busyness versus accomplishment. Crossing the line from stewing to doing. Number one, confront the most common reason for stewing, which is your fear. The number one reason, whatever it is, confront it. Don't be afraid to take a big step. You can't cross a chasm in two small jumps. It has to be one incredible leap. Do not waste worry. If you're going to worry, worry well, but put that energy into good use. Aim at it. Aim at the answer. Don't forget. And don't forget that nothing diminishes anxiety faster than action. Fastest way to kill anxiety? Action. Number two, make a list of goals, including some impossible goals. If you're bored with life, you don't have enough goals. The ship in the harbor is safe, but that's not what ships are built for. Philanthropist John Shedd. Number three, count the costs. Number four, ideas without a cross are worth an Count three, count the costs. Number three, ideas without action are worthless. Number four, aim for the finish line, but take in one step at a time. Our problem is not the lack of knowledge, it's the lack of doing. Number five, reach the point of no return. A journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. You have to continue forward and burn the ships behind you. There is no chance of retreat. Six, learn and refine. No matter how hard you work for success, in your thoughts saturated with fear of failure, it will kill your efforts, neutralize your undevoirs, and make success impossible. 7. Make room for serendipity. I am sick and reasonable. I am sick of reasonable people. They see all the reasons for doing nothing. The moment one definitely commits oneself, then providence moves on. Commit yourself to a dream. Nobody tries to do something great but fails at a total failure. Why? Because he can always rest assured that he succeeded in life's most important battle. He defeated his fear of trying. Even if you're on the right track, you'll get run over if you just sit there. Will Rogers. It takes three seconds to quit stewing and start doing. Questions for personal reflection. Number one. You read about my experience as of an ABD graduate, student who had completed everything but my dissertation. My dissert dissertation. Name one item in life that is an ABD, something that you fret about but never get around to completing. On a scale of one, one a little, ten a lot, what would you rate your natural inclination to give in an impulse to stew or instead of to do? 
do you give this rating? How do you give this rating on your, in, on your natural inclination to give? What fear do you give when you follow your first impulse to stew? What fear is it when you think to stew? Write down as many things as you can think of. The next, answer the next two questions, each fear. Is it logical or is it useful? Remember, next time on your first impulse, think about it as the stew. Now you have to think about the action to do. What is the most unreachable goal that you have? Make a list of two columns, one headed rewards and the other headed price. Take time to install a list of rewards and the cost associated with pursuing the goal. Is it worth the attempt? Why or why not? The chapter talks about reaching a point of no return, the first big step on the journey towards the finish line. What do you think will be the point of no return with the goals of your currently, what are the goals you're currently considering? How to make your second impulse second nature. Leap and the net will appear. Leap and the net will appear. Julie Cameron. For example, I fear that when feeling especially helpless, you will give into an impulse by shrugging your shoulders and saying, there's nothing I can do about it. I fear that when you're facing a particularly big challenge, you will surrender to your first impulse by saying, it's too, it's too tough to even try. Or while wanting to feel your passion, I fear it may be still a sidestep to the vision and give it away to an impulse that says, oh, I'll just do it to what comes my way. I fear that when you have an opportunity to walk to an extra mile or work at home, you may become too distracted or too tired to resist the impulse that says, I've done what's required and that's not enough. And finally, I fear that when it comes down to trading and stewing, overdoing, you will perpetually give up the impulse that says, well, someday I'll get around to it, but now. Each of these impulses was self-sabotaging. They do nothing to elevate your life. You have to have a new habit. If not resisted, it soon becomes necessity. Risky business. To think about it. When you disown your helplessness, you risk responsibility. When you embrace challenge, you risk losing face. When you feel your passion, the risk of comfort is what you know. When you own your piece of the pie, you risk taking the blame. When you walk the extra mile, you risk being exhausted. When you quit stewing and start doing, you risk failure. If you think about it, making your second impulse is a habit. What is needed is effectiveness and competence. Effective competence. What is needed are the scales. So remember this. Empower yourself by saying, I can't do everything, but I can do something. I embrace a good challenge by saying, I'm not willing to step up. I'm willing to step up and give it a good try. Feel your passion by saying, I'll do what I'm designed to do. Make your own piece of the pie by saying, the buck stops here. And make and own your piece of the pie. Walk the extra mile by saying, I'll go above and beyond the mere minimum, extra mile. I'll quit stewing and start doing by saying, I'm diving in and I'm starting today. The three seconds, power of thinking twice.